Hello, this is Brian Casey of AntMini.com, and we're here at the 2015 edition of the RSNA meeting in Chicago. We have with us right now Dr. Paul Chang. He is a Vice Chair of Radiology at the University of Chicago. Uh, Dr. Chang, thanks for being with us today. Pleasure to be here. Great. Uh, so one of the big buzzwords uh, at, here at the meeting and in radiology in general has been uh, the use of artificial intelligence to, uh, to you know, for, for data analytics purposes, big data, and also potentially to um, assist radiologists and, and also look at, uh, look at uh, uh, radiology scans. Um, Dr. Chang, what do you think about this, this trend toward artificial intelligence, all the talk that we've been hearing about uh, uh, IBM Watson and that kind of thing? I think you're certainly right. There's a, it's a big buzzword. In fact, it's almost as big a buzzword as last year's big buzzword, big data, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that, they're related. I think the good news here is the fact that we're actually causing a lot of stir and talking about things like machine learning and big data is the fact that we have to move up the value chain. We have to move from simply manipulating and consuming data and information to true knowledge. And from an informatics point of view, that means we can't just slip around data anymore. We have to actually understand what we're doing from a knowledge perspective, how we can actually add value to our patients, improve efficiency, uh, as well as improving quality. We need to go beyond simple scorecards and dashboards to do that, and hence the concept of big data, because big data allows us to store and access information in a way that other tools like artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, Bayesian networks, all these kind of advanced kind of technologies can then consume. Um, so it's an exciting time and I think the fact that we are actually recognizing these as important issues potentially is a good sign. It means that we understand that we have to move beyond just data to knowledge. I have three caveats on this. You know, you have to kind of kind of slow our roll a little bit here, all right? The first concept here is that we have to level and understand and have realistic expectations about when this stuff is actually going to be real. When you look at the commercials, like every time I'm watching a football game, I see a commercial on how uh, these systems are going to be able to either replace or augment radiologists and looking at images. We have to be very careful on this. I've done a lot of work on this when I was younger in artificial intelligence and kind of the, the precursor to these deep learning, machine learning kind of things. These systems require a lot of training. That's both its advantage and disadvantage. You need to actually train. You need to feed these systems thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of studies with validation, which is the key. It's not enough just feeding images. You actually have to have validation and say this image is something that I'm interested in. This image is, 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 is a distractor. This is going to take a lot of time. It's one of the reasons when you look at companies such as IBM, why they spend so much money uh, uh, acquiring Merge. In addition to the technology, they want access to content to be able to feed these systems. The problem is these images alone without validation, without proof, without pathology, it's going to be very difficult to train. And this is one of the problems I'll get into later on. So that's a challenge, which means we have to basically be very realistic when, we're going, when we understand or expect when we're going to actually see these kind of technologies actually help us. I think uh, the, the, the second concern I have about uh, these the systems is that I'm always suspect when the thing that's driving it is the technology or capability. Like I'm an expert in expert systems or deep learning or Bayesian networks. I have a particular tool. Let me go find something in the medical domain or radiology domain that might be useful to use this tool. And I'm always a little suspect when it's technology or capability push. I'm much more pragmatic. I would rather be use case or problem pull. In other words, I would rather say here are my problems problems, real world problems that preclude or prevent me from maximizing or optimizing the care to my patient, preclude or, or, uh, or, or are barriers to my ability to maximize quality or efficiency. Now, these are the problems, let's go find the appropriate technologies. One size doesn't fit all. So one of the consequences of that and why I'm a little bit, uh, uh, you know, want to be a little bit more pragmatic or perhaps realistic about the buzz of all these new technologies is we've gone through this cycle too many times where this is the buzz because the technology is sexy, but then when we try to apply it to real use case, to real problems, we recognize eh, maybe it's not the greatest fit. A good example of that is when you look at a lot of these artificial intelligence, deep learning type approaches, they team, at least on the commercials, they team, the, the, the big push is using them to analyze or detect abnormalities in images. Okay, 
First of all, my concern is, is that really something is a nice to have or must have? Has someone given me the data, the validation? Second of all, we have alternatives. We actually have uh, CAD systems that do that quite well. So right now, we're just in its infancy in this. We haven't actually validated whether or not these very sophisticated approaches are even marginally better. They're certainly more expensive. They require more infrastructure, much more complex big data capabilities. Is it worth it compared to the more pedestrian or vetted type approaches. So that's the second issue, and that is I'm a little concerned when people are pushing technology and capability rather than trying to solve problems first. The third concern I have is, is that many of us, in fact I would say most of us, aren't able to consume this technology. And so people have to really, actually haven't given thought how we're actually going to use this in the real world. A good way to look at this is when I try to explain to folks about what artificial intelligence is or these deep learning systems, I use the analogy of biologic systems. It's the brain, it's a brain that it can take input and information and move it to knowledge. That's what the brain does. Well, I actually believe that we in IT, as certainly in healthcare, we recapitulate evolution. Evolution didn't start off with a brain. We didn't have a brain walking around or floating around the ocean. We started with more primitive capabilities, sensor data, sensor capability, that's what uh, neuroendocrine systems are, nerve systems. We then developed a notochord, a spine, to be able to aggregate those co comments, uh, uh, signals and, and, and information so that we could actually aggregate and actually have them in a, some central place to analyze. Only then did evolution eventually develop a brain okay, from the spinal cord. One of the challenges I see is most of us, when we look at our IT infrastructure, we're so EMR centric. We're so, we're 10, 15 years behind, as we've talked before, other industries in developing an infrastructure that allows, we don't have the notochord, we don't have the bus, we don't have the ability to extract this information to feed these, not only big data systems, but these new machine learning, sophisticated machines. So my third caveat is, in addition to the fact that we're very early in this validation, that we really don't understand how best to use it. We also can't consume right now. So I think we need to be a little bit you know, pragmatic and a little bit realistic in when we can expect this. I actually believe, I actually think there are low hanging, perhaps less sexy use cases for this technology that we could probably use right now. For example, when you look at other industries, I'm a big believer of intellectual arbitrage. I believe we can learn from other industries. I think one of the most successful applications of this technology has not been in image detection or fi findings, but rather trying to extract structure from unstructured narrative reports. That's what systems, if you look at Google, Amazon, Twitter, they've been very successful in using these technologies to extract from unstructured narratives like Twitter feeds or Facebook comments and extract things like consumer sentiment or, or aspects that may be useful for marketers or people selling stuff. Well, we have similar kind of issues. We have all this unstructured narrative out in our hospitals and our EMRs, our radiology reports, our pathology reports, uh, nursing notes, progress notes, HMPs. These things are unstructured and it's, it, in order for us to demonstrate value, we're going to have to figure out a way to extract in a meaningful way intent with utilization and outcome. This is very difficult to do. It, will be, it would be very useful to be able to extract some of the information in these unstructured narratives. So instead of going after something that's going to be very difficult, take a long time to train, in other words, applying these technologies like machine learning to image ex feature extraction, why not apply it to the more pedestrian but potentially much more useful use case of a using these technologies like other industries in extracting information from our reports. We could actually do that now and that's why I am actually more interested, I'm trying to encourage these, these manufacturers to do the perhaps less sexy but potentially more useful from a, from a value proposition application. I think the final comment is this is ultimately a good news because basically what this means is we're going beyond the traditional, traditional EMR centric relational database approach into more what I call a policy polymorphic capability when it comes to business intelligence. And I think that's the good news. The good news is we have to move from the old fashioned, we have an EMR, we have a PAX, we have our relational database, into we need to have a much more capable polymorphic aspect or approach to business intelligence. Okay, perfect. All right, Dr. Chang, some great thoughts. Thanks for, thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much. Right. Signing off for Ammini.com, this is Brian Casey.